Commissioner, welcome to the program. Texas is fast losing this natural resource of water here. Are leaders in the state taking this seriously enough? Well, I certainly am. I mean, it's, it's been an issue for me for 10 years. We, uh, we lose about a farm a week in Texas, uh, but we're not running, we're, it's 700 years before we run out of land. The limiting factor is water. We're out of water, uh, especially in the Rio Grande Valley. Uh, is that why we're losing farms? Uh, it is. Quickly? It is. We're, there's, you know, we've we lost an entire industry of uh, sugar production. Sugarcane is gone from the valley. The last sugar plant had to close because the farmers couldn't get enough water to raise the sugarcane. We pushed out 6,000 acres of citrus for lack of water. A lot of people, that, especially in that part of the state, blame Mexico not fulfilling their treaty. Uh, they're supposed to supply us with so much water. You know, we share the water in the Rio right. Grande. Uh, and that's basically the only water down there. There's not sufficient groundwater uh, to supply the cities or the farmers. But it's, it's my view is we got to quit complaining and do something about it. We got to, you know, pull ourselves up by the bootstraps and we've got to start doing one thing like off channel storage. In high water events, that water just runs right out in the bay. We miss it, it goes right by us. We've got to start being smarter. We spend millions and millions of dollars on stormwater drainage getting rid of stormwater. We need to capture that, do rainwater harvesting. But isn't that polluted though? I, I, everyone I've talked to says, Actually, oh, a lot of that water is polluted, we can't use it anyways. No, no, rainwater is virtually almost clean. It's never hit the ground. If you capture it before it hits the ground, I yeah, guess. Yeah, yeah, you okay. catch it off rooftops. Sure. I mean, we that's, that's, that's as old as Texas. I mean, the Texas was settled with, you know, cisterns and catching uh, rooftop water. Uh, but these huge distribution warehouses, we can, capture that, you don't even have to clean it up. You use it for irrigation, municipal manufacturing, uh, so, so many uses. Uh, we've, got, we've got to embrace uh, reverse osmosis. We, we've got, we can clean up brackish water very cheaply. Our fracking industry is changing. They're starting to use brackish water, clean it up. We've got to recycle our water. Our water treatment water goes right into the creek, right out, right yeah. out in the Gulf. We, we need to capture that and let my farmers irrigate with it. Great example of that is Israel. They don't waste a drop of water over there. And we've got to we've got to do a better job, a smarter job of managing our water resources. We're not. We have infrastructure problems. But so, some of our cities lose 30 percent of the water by the time they get it to they get it to the customer. That's unacceptable. We can't waste 30 percent of our water. Yeah, I think you wrote in the op-ed recently that there were a half dozen cities that wasted some what 88 billion gallons. Or 88 something? billion gallons. W were those like big cities or are those yes. like suburbs yeah, yeah, or what yeah. are those? Uh, you know, th there was an article went out uh, this week from the city of Houston. Billions and billions of gallons of water they just waste. Uh, they can't account for it. Wow. It's it's leaky infrastructure. They replace two percent of their water lines a year. It takes 50 years to replace an antiquated water system. That's unacceptable. We gotta, we gotta be more aggressive than that. You just laid out some, some things that the state needs to do to try to capture water and, sure. and, and retain it more. What's that gonna cost though? It sounds pretty expensive. Well, we, the money's there. You know, we, we have the Texas Water Development Board. We have $6 billion in there for water projects. Uh, uh, we, we loaned it out. It's, it's evergreen, it comes back in. You have to pay it off. I have grants. I just set out 90 grants to small communities across Texas, half million dollars each, $450 million to replace, you know, antiquated water lines. Uh, we've got to stop wasting water. We have the federal uh, government has several programs uh, to replace in infrastructure. Uh, they're, we're just not tapping into those that, uh, like we should be. You saw our interview with Senator Perry last week talking about this too. And you're one of the few statewide elected officials that I know of that's sounding the alarm on this issue. Why are more people talking about this? Well, I, I don't, you know, th they should be. I mean, we've, we've, we've got a, so, so here's, here's another huge factor, and people need to know this. America's been known as the breadbasket of the world. We kind of feed the world. Yeah. Last year, it probably shocked your listeners to know that we bought $16 billion more food than we exported. We bought in food more than we exported. And we haven't done that in the past? Never done that, not in my lifetime that I, that I know of. Uh, this year's forecast was at 30, double, $32 billion import. And last week, the new re revised report came out, we're gonna import $42 billion more food products than we're gonna export. That's unacceptable. A lot of that is poor marketing by the USDA, but a lot of it's attributed to, we don't have water to grow the crops. We, our tomato production in the valley is just about gone. They usually grow five crops of vegetables in, in, in that winter garden area. They have enough water to grow one. So our production's down 80%. What does that See, mean? And it's what? all about water. 
What does that mean when I go to the grocery store? If Texas can't grow some citrus crops, if it can't grow tomatoes, are, are Texans paying more already because of this issue? You know, it's, it's still, the prices are still pretty competitive, uh, but you are paying more and it is the added freight. You know, it has to come from Mexico, or Central South America. Uh, that all adds cost, so that's all passed on, and that's why the cost of gas and groceries, you know, you've seen the charts, how much groceries are up 20% to 40% every time you go to the grocery store, and that's, that's why. Put this in context for us, how serious is the situation for the state of Texas? Last, last week I called it an existential threat. Was that hyperbole? Not like, it, it is a threat. People are not talking about it, but we need to get it on the radar. We've got to, we're Texans. We can take care of ourselves. We've got to quit whining about Mexico not paying their water bill, and we got to do something about it ourselves. And and we have we have the resources and the know-how uh, to use brackish water to salt water. Uh, you know, city of Alice is going to get completely off of lake water, and they're going to RO water. They're going to use brackish water, a whole new source of water. Uh, El Paso and Big Springs have been doing it for years. Uh, El Paso recycles their wastewater. Uh, we've got to be smart about. Uh, managing our water resources. Commissioner, let me ask you about politics for a moment. Has partisan politics blinded leaders in this state, you think, taking their attention off of what we really should be doing, thinking about how to keep the state alive for the next century? Well, I think we need to start talking about water. I mean, it, it's we're out of it. There is, you know, we, we've got to have new sources. We've got to manage the resources we have. Is it that serious? It, it you, is. You said we're out of it. Is it, it that serious? It is. You can't get a Pecos cantaloupe anymore. The whales are dry out there. They don't grow cantaloupes in Pecos anymore. Everybody used to love to eat Pecos cantaloupes. You can't find one anymore because the farmers are gone. There's no water. They had to leave. What happens to this land? Well, uh, that's uh, you know kind of an arid desert type land out there in far west Texas. Not, not much else you can do with it. There's some oil and gas production on it, but that's about it. Okay, oil and gas. So it's being used for something, I guess. Sure. But, but not what it could be used for. Well, we've done stories in the past and done interviews in the past about how the, the lack of water threatens the growth in the state for urban areas too. Th th this is across the board. This is not just agriculture, agri agricultural areas and rural areas. Th this affects the state. It's, it affects it's everybody. We've, you know, I'll, I'll give you an example. So the Highland Lakes in the Austin area, Colorado River, that feeds all the way down to the Katy Prairie. That's our rice growing area. We, we once had 600,000 acres of rice down there. Now we're down to 100,000 acres. It's almost, that industry's almost gone because they can't get enough water to, to, to water the rice. So what did we do? We did something smart. Off the Colorado River, we bought, built off-channel stories. So in those high water events, when the river's up, we capture that water instead of letting it run out in the Gulf. And now we have a reserve and our rice farms are starting to come back and multiply and our acreage is growing down there. We gotta be smart like that. We're not smart like that in all parts of the state yet. How much is on the line for water in this state? Well, what's at, what's at risk here in this state if we don't get this figured out? Well, you know, we, at one time we could water ourselves with windmills and, and, and cisterns. Th those days are long gone. We're up to 30 million people and we have a finite amount of water and we're maxed out. We, we've got to do a better job of, we can't manage it the way we managed it in the past. We can't waste it. It's, it's too precious resource. If we don't do that, uh, we won't be able to handle the, the population expansion, uh, especially at the rate that we're having it now. Do you think the legislature realizes this? I'm trying to get that word across. We're putting the message out there. There's certain members in the legislature, but both the House and the Senate, that do realize that uh, and intend to address it. We, we have the Texas Water Development Board. You know, those three commissioners there, they're aware of it. Uh, I'm making, you know, my voice heard. Uh, Agriculture is the largest user of water in the state, so I think I have an obligation to protect it and uh, make sure we use it wisely. What's the timeline on this? Everyone I'm talking to says we should have been doing this 10 years ago. We've got to start tomorrow. We've got to start doing this immediately here. Well, actually, we have a 50-year water plan, and, and it's a good plan. Uh, the problem is it's about 30 years old. We, we've got to go back in, come redo that plan, kind of like the old NAFTA agreement. You know, it's, it's outdated. Our water plan's outdated. Our population has changed, our needs have changed, so we've got to go back in, rework that 50-year water plan, get us a new water plan, figure out what it's going to take to get us through the next 50 years. Commissioner, what do you want the legislature to do next session? One, I'd like them to redo our water plan, go back and revisit that and come up with a, a new, refreshed 50-year uh, water plan. I'd like them to encourage, incentivize uh, counties and states to, to conserve water. 
to fix their infrastructure, their leaky pipes and everything where we're wasting water. We got to stop that. There's a whole lot they can do. Let me ask you about uh, Rene Ramirez. He owns El Milagro Ranch in Zapata County, south of Laredo there. You, you've been to the ranch itself. You know what's going on with TxDOT and him. He's trying to save his 200 year old uh, family ranch there. Just curious, um, any chance of saving this ranch based on what you know here? Is, is there an agreement that can be reached? I think so. If we could just use a little cowboy logic, you know, uh, TxDOT engineers really, when they build those highways, they don't take in consideration the heritage of the, of the family ranch reform. This, this ranch, this would be the third time in five generations that eminent domain has destroyed their ranch. You know, it's, 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 you know, they're just taking it an extra large dose of it. So yes, the highway could be moved a little, leave the ranch house intact. Uh, I don't think it's unreasonable. We're working with Renee, working with TxDOT. Legislators in that area have, have reached out and, are, and I, I, hopefully we will get him some relief and he won't lose the historic family place. I want to ask about biosolids being used as fertilizer. This is a, a big deal we've reported on here as well too. It's, it's called PFAS, the microplastics that are in all of us, the chemicals that we've all right. consumed all the time. Companies are selling this to farmers. Farmers are using this on their land. Their land is contaminated, killing their crops, their, their livestock. How big of a deal do you think this is right now? This is not just isolated, it seems like, to Johnson County, south of Fort Worth. This seems a lot more widespread. Well, in the beginning, it was getting rid of sewage sludge, which makes really good fertilizer. But we didn't know anything about PFOS at that time. So over a number of years, it builds up. And then when it builds up to a certain level, it's toxic, kills your livestock. Uh, that's where we are in Johnson County, that, that so much of that has been applied to those farms down there. And it's, it's a forever chemical, it doesn't go away. There's really not any way to clean those farms up. So we, we've got to reach out to the EPA. This is something that needs to be regulated. It, it's not now, uh, but it's very dangerous for our environment. Uh, I consider myself uh, an environmentalist. I want, I want clean water, I want clean land, I want, you know, I want uh, clean air. Uh, Do you consider yourself an environmentalist? Absolutely, yeah. For every farm and ranch are probably the best environmentalists on the planet because we all have one goal in common. Doesn't matter if you're a farmer or a rancher or, or where your place is. We want to leave our place in better shape than we found it for our kids and our grandkids. And that's, that's a good environmentalist. Do, do you think the legislature should give the TCEQ more power instead of waiting on the EPA to address this? Should the state try to address this in these hotspot areas? I think the state could address it, but I think the proper channel would be through the EPA because we don't want other states, you know, livestock poisoned. It's, it's, uh, it's not isolated to Texas. This is a problem for the whole United States. Do you expect the legislature is going to address this at all? Let, I, think I think they will. I think I think I don't know if they'll get anything passed, but it will be addressed. It, it uh, hopefully should have been an interim study. I don't believe it was, uh, but uh, may, maybe we can bring at least shed some light on it. If we can't get legislation this time, we can bring the subject up, uh, give it a top priority uh, for a future date. Commissioner, good to see you. Thanks for coming in. Thank you, sir. Good stuff.